recording. Yeah, that's go ahead. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Two, three. Sada Shiva Samarambam Shankara Charya Madhyamam Asmara Charya Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Ishwaro Gauratmeti Murti Beda Vibhagine Vyoma Vad Vyapta Deaya Dakshinamurtaye Namaha Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Pranatos Myam Om. Okay, uh, welcome. I won't uh, I won't give you any lectures on uh, donations tonight. <laughs> I'll save that until <laughs> till the next time. Uh, and uh, I think Sundari mentioned that you, I would promise to do, what was it I promised to do? No, no, you're going to continue with last night, but you were also going to talk about sadhana, just a little bit. Well, oh, I was, okay. I think I, I we have a we have a little difference of opinion about what was supposed to happen. I think uh, we were going. I said I will talk about um, sadhana, but this is sadhana. So, uh, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what she was referring to. Probably with reference to the topic last week, uh, but this is the topic to last week. Uh, this is. Uh, and and I forgot last week uh, to tell you the story of the Milky Ocean, which is a story about projection and denial and uh, harnessing, harnessing the power of the mind to uh, do inquiry. Unless, unless all the forces in the mind are are concentrated on this one topic, uh, it, it virtually impossible to succeed. So anyway, uh, this is one of these charming Puranic stories. I've actually uh, written it up in, uh, and it's on the website in the article section, publication of the publica publication article section of the uh, website. It's called uh, Symbols of the Self. Because all, all of these Quranic stories, which bedeviled early, um, early visitors to India when they were trying to figure out what Indian Vedic culture was all about, these days uh, they had a heck of a time uh, figuring out what what these symbols and stories were all about, they uh, one of the Germans, uh, Max Müller, he was a famous German um, Vedic scholar. He's a Sanskrit guy and everything. He was very dedicated to uh, Vedic culture. He when he first came across <laughs> across uh, these uh, Puranic deities and stories. He reported back to uh, the Western world that uh, India was uh, the the Vedic culture. Or India was a prattlings of the humanity in its early infancy. In in other words, cry babies, cry babies crying. They didn't know anything. They just talk. <laughs> so uh, uh, whereas. Uh, the, the reality is these are incredibly sophisticated devices to help you cement the teachings in your mind. 
the, it, it's not that hard to understand this intellectually, although people don't listen properly and then they get the wrong intellectual concept. But people who are pro particularly professional people who are trained to listen, uh, they can listen uh, well enough to get the basic ideas. But um, assimilating those ideas is something else. And to help you uh, as an aid to your assimilation, these stories, these stories were designed by the Rishis during the Puranic period. Puranic period came after the Vedic period. We're in the Puranic period now. Uh, to help inquirers who had one uh, interest in the teachings to, they were provocative, and so they caused people to get in, to become interested in the culture because there's a uniformity uh, throughout the, the Vedic culture uh, as to the symbolism and as to the meaning of the symbols and as to the intelligence of the design, which attracts people who are you know, curious people. And not just for those people uh, who they created, but they were created for people who had actually heard the teaching and now wanted to uh, implement the teaching in their daily lives. Uh, you know, the one put their money where their mouth is because you're already free. And if you're not experiencing freedom and living a, a dharmic life, then their knowledge of that you're free is basically useless. So anyway, so it so happened that one day uh, the gods uh, heard about this. Um, well, they they all, they had a problem. Usually, usually the stories all start with the same. The gods have a problem. They're not being worshipped. Now, gods means the environmental forces, air, fire, water, earth, and ether. In other words, the, these stories are uh, meant to address the problems, in, the environmental problems that we're seeing today. As we're not worshiping the gods. We're not worshiping the air, the fire, the water, or the earth. We're uh, polluting it, extracting value and leaving a filthy, polluted mess behind. And so the gods uh, went to Vishnu. Vishnu means uh, Ishwara, uh, the all-seeing eye, the knower, creator, sustainer, and destroyer of this Dharma field. And they said, look, he, 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 Vishnu says, hey, hey, you guys are looking kind of we can be draggled. In fact, you're looking downright emaciated. What's up? Because he, you know, he doesn't keep track of what's going on in the in the Dharma field. That means what? People who know their all-pervading existing Chinese consciousness are, are are not concerned about what's happening in the Dharma field. They're just uh, experiencing the bliss of awareness and and that's it so the god said well um i know you wouldn't understand uh, sir but uh because you are always full and complete and uh, revel only in your own glory but we we happen to be living in the reflection of your glory in the world of time and space where the um, five elements are doing their thing. And it so happens that because of excessive materialism, a people have not been able to um, gain freedom and be happy and realize who they are. And we would like you to, we'd like some advice, actually. We'd like some advice. Uh, Vedanta, we don't, we give advice if it's asked. 
and uh, we make suggestions, which you're free to pick up on, but we never tell you what to do. <laughs> we don't want the responsibility. That responsibility is on your shoulders. You you have to run your own life, and a guru who tries to run your, your life is uh, not only a fool, but you're a fool for listening to a guru who's telling you what to do. That's our view. So, the, uh, Indra, the king of the gods, he always speaks for the other elements. Indra means the mind, not just the four elements, but the what? The knower of the four elements, the lord of the four elements, which is the mind. As we said, all of your perceptions uh, appear as thoughts in the mind. So, the mind is the knowing instrument. The senses themselves don't know anything. They just report data and uh, and they don't understand what they're reporting, but they, they do their job. Each one is, has his own little field of, of experience and, and collects information and delivers it to Indra, the king. And the king, what does he do? He integrates it and, and, and doubts it and, and um, determines what needs to happen and initiates action, emotion and action. So, so um, Indra said, um, so what should we do? And Vishnu said, well, uh, you know there's a great milky, you know the great milky ocean. Um, and he said, yeah, of course, everybody knows the great milky ocean. And um, down at the bottom, at the very bottom of that milky ocean is a beautiful golden chalice full of the nectar of immortality. One, one drop, well, yeah, no, even one sniff of that nectar, one taste of that nectar will make you immortal. And um, and then you won't have to worry about all this stuff, all this worldly stuff. Then you'll, you'll just, everything's good, not to worry. And rather than like trying to fix all these problems, topical problems that you have every day, uh, we think the best thing for you to do, we meaning the rishis, the sages, we think the best thing for you to do is to investigate, dive down into that ocean and retrieve that chalice and take a sip. We see that's our suggestion. And uh, so I'm uh, recommending that. It's up to you, of course, if you don't want to, then you know, you can leave it up to the world. <laughs> Your happiness, you can leave to the world. But if you want to be full and complete and happy uh, and and full, full meaning they're emaciated, they're 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 bedeviled by their desires, they're consumers. Remember the Manduki, the waking state entity? <laughs> it has 19 mouths. It's it's a it's a consumer. It's just constantly hungry, and um, you know it needs. Uh, you want to have a full belly like Ganesh means what? You want to see that you're full and satisfied. So you're right. You're not bedeviled or problem. You know, have problems with hunger. Any kind of hunger, psychological hunger, physical hunger, whatever, spiritual hunger, all of that sort of. So the God said, okay, you've always been uh, a good friend. You've always been wise. Whatever you've uh, suggested before uh, that we have um, implemented always worked. And we trust you. And we're going to try. So... They uh, were sitting, they, they went to the edge of the lake and they thought that Milky Ocean's infinite. It means what? 
means the mind. So Mel, Melky, we'll see in a minute what that means. It's infinite. It's huge. You, they sit on the shore. You can't see the end. It actually has no beginning and end, but it seems to be endless, and it is endless. And they thought, "Wow, how are we going to do that? How are we going to get way out there in the middle?" and dive down to the deepest part and and pull up that chalice. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I just don't think we have the, the, the strength for, to do it. And even if we hold hands and all dive together and use all of our small powers, I don't think we're going to get to the bottom. And uh, the, uh, the other gods said, you know, Indra, you, you're wise. You're very much like the self, like Vishnu. And uh, we trust you and uh, we agree. Uh, I don't think we, we don't think we can do it. We've taken a vote. We don't think we can do it. What should we do? And so they sat down and were pondering it and a little frustrated and a little depressed that they couldn't figure out how to get down there to the bottom, how to discover themselves. And uh, just then, they looked up in the sky and there was a mountain was flying by. In those, uh, in those days, the mountains had wings. And they were, you know, out for a stroll. Out for a little, you know, they like to look around, like to see things. What's that mean? It means that everything in the, in, the, in, in, my, in the Mitya world, in the Maya, in the world, is conscious. <laughs> it, it, it moves. It lives and moves. It's alive. Everything is alive, including the, and, and what? And even matter's alive, apparently. So they put wings on it to include matter. Obviously, the sentient beings are alive, but they claim in the, in the Puranas, they don't claim, they state that the, everything is alive. The material universe as well as the sentient beings. So they put wings on mountains and various other things to indicate that. So the mass mountain came flying by. It was called Mount Mandara. It was like the first mountain. It's like the mountain of mountains. It's like the Everest mountain, the biggest mountain. And very, very tall, very high. And Indra said, hey, 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 Mandara, hey, whoa. And so Mandara circles around like a plane. And he comes down, sits down on the shore with the gods. And he said, uh, yeah, guys, what's up? And Indra said, well, all, all obeisances to you. I'll, Mount Mandara, uh, you indeed a great soul. Uh, I know you're free of all things, uh, and you have lots of leisure on your hands always. Uh, and we want to ask you a favor. You seem to be out for a Sunday drive, not doing anything in particular. We noticed you kind of looking around at things, and um, we'd like to ask you a favor. And Mandara said, "Yeah, you're right. I, yeah, I, that's fine. Okay, what, what, you know, if I can help you, I'll, I'll help." And uh, it, what's the problem? And Indra said, "Well, down at the bottom of the Milky Ocean, right in the middle, is a chalice of nectar that, if you drink a little bit, will give you immortality." And Vishnu told us we needed to get get hold of that 
extract that, mine that, that chalice and bring it to the surface and have a drop and attain immortality. And we thought, well, that's a good idea because, you know, we've got our troubles here. We're worried about this and worried about that and so on and so forth. And so, um, and we thought that since you're so tall, that if you go and park yourself right in the middle of the ocean, your head will stick out. And um, we can wrap a rope around your neck and churn the ocean up. This is a milky comes in here. The, the word churn comes with milk because you're getting, when you churn milk, you get butter. What's the butter? The chalice. When you do self inquiry, you get what? The nectar of immortality. You get butter. In, in uh, Ganesha's hands, in Krishna's hand, there's a butter ball. It means what? It means what? They're immortal. They're, 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 they've attained that understanding and are free and immortal. So Madara said, okay, yeah, that's a noble pursuit. And I, you're right, I have nothing to do, I, I will. So he flew out and landed down. And sure enough, just his, right up to his shoulders, the milky ocean came and his necklace and head was sticking out. And he said, okay, I'm ready. Get your, go you know, bring your, uh, bring your rope. You need a rope. And uh, Inner thought, oh, geez, you know, we don't have a rope. Gosh, what dummies. And, uh, and just then, as he thought that thought, this, this is a magical creation, a lug comes Visuki. Visuki is the cosmic serpent. And uh, slithering along. And Vasuki is another one of these enlightened people. And, Vas and Indra said, ah, uh, Indra's the guy that gets the ideas. He's the mind. He gets the ideas. So, ah, I see. Vasuki's uh, infinite too, just like Mandara. He's just an infinite snake, and Mandara's an infinite mountain. Let's use him as a rope. So he said, oh, oh, Vasuki, lovely to see you. Indra's always diplomatic. Indra is, uh, he knows how to get what he wants. So he butters people up. If, you, if you're uh, fond of buttering people up, it's smart actually to butter people up before you ask them what you want. Because you want to get them in a good mood. Right? If they're in a good mood, that's one thing, but if, if you're not sure if they're in a good mood or not, because you can't always tell, then butter them up. Compliment them a little bit. Tell them how wonderful they are. And uh, so Indira says to him, says, uh, yes, indeed, uh, it's so great to see you. You're, you are indeed uh, one, of the, one of the great Rishi Mahatmas of the, the whole Sam Vedanta Sampradaya and Vizuki said, look, Indra, come on, take it easy. You don't need to butter me up. I'm okay. What do you want? And Indra said, well, um, we heard that from Vishnu. Come on, get on with it. He's he, Indra, the mind is always wants attention, so it strings out stories all the time makes them long and makes big pauses and so forth and so on to make sure everybody's looking at it, right? And uh, like a politician, politicians always scanning the audience, looking around, seeing if anybody's paying attention because they're sort of like empty suits, you know? The mind's like an empty suit. It, it just needs to be loved. It needs to pay attention, has somebody to pay attention to it. So he says, come on, cut to the chase, man. Uh, and Indra said, um, Okay, Vishnu told us there's a nectar of immortality at the bottom. Mount Madara is sitting there, and he's agreed to uh, to act as a churn. And we have to churn the ocean to get the nectar. And so we want you to slither out there 
wrap yourself around his neck, put your head on one side and your tail on the other. And then we'll split up into two groups. And what? Uh, and half of us will grab the head, the other half will grab the tail, and we'll churn. And and because you're such, you know, great guys, and we got lots of energy because we're really inspired by this desire to gain this immortality. That um, we'll we'll have it up in no time, and you can continue on your way. Mandar can continue his flying around, having his his gun and. It'll all be good. So, how about, what do you think? I say, okay, bye. And out he goes, wraps himself around Mandara's neck and puts one head on the one shore and the other on the other shore. And the gods said, okay, let's split up. There were six of them. Five, Indra was five senses, three and three. So half of them took, and, and the God said, just a minute, uh, Indra said, uh, okay, you guys, you take the, the tail. I'll take the head. I'll just take two guys, but I'll take the head. And you three can pull on the tail. <laughs> and the, 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 the three that just said, said, hey, hey, just a minute, man. We're not pulling on the tail. Indra says, you'll do what I say. I'm the boss. I'm the king of the mind. So do what I say. And we'll get it up. And so they said, you know, you're a big tyrant. But this is a good idea. And you always seem to see, always seem to, things they always seem to work out somehow when you give us suggestions. And that fact, this isn't a suggestion, but we'll follow orders and we'll get it because we want freedom too. So they split up and they started churning. And they churned and they churned and they churned and they churned. Oh, they churned and churned and churned. And nothing much happened. There's a few little waves came up on the surface, but nothing happened at all. And they thought, wow, we just, wow. What, what, what's going on here? And somebody says, why don't you ask Vishnu? So Indra zips up to Ish, Ish, uh, Vishnu. He says, hey, we're having a, having a problem here. And um, we, you must have known, because you know everything. You're all knowing. You must have known we were going to have this problem. So since you give us a problem, you're required to give us a solution also. And Vishnu said, oh, good thinking, you're right. I did give you this problem, and now I'm going to give you the solution. And Indra said, okay, what is it? He said, you need more energy you guys are weak. You, you just can't do it on your own. You're good guys. You're gods. Gods are always good guys. Gods, gods are benign. Gods are looking after the welfare of everything. Isn't that right? You're, the air, the fire, the water, the earth, all those elements, aren't they all looking after us? They're feeding us. We can breathe because of them, etc., etc., etc. They're good guys. He says, but... You're going to need more energy than you've got. So I suggest you get the demons to help you. <laughs> As far as the demons, you've got to be kidding. We're not going to share, we're not going to share that with that, those guys. They're demons. We're going to make the demons immortal. The only the God should be immortal, the demons should not be immortal. That's a dumb idea. And Vishnu says, well, take it or leave it. It's up to you. I mean, you know, uh, otherwise you're starving to death anyway. And if you take my advice, uh, usually my advice is good advice. And as you well know, and therefore I suggest you follow it. 
So Indra says, okay, yes, boss. And off he goes. And he gets down there, and, and just when he gets there, he tells it to the other gods. And they, they all they all got excited and had the same reaction in Indra had. And because they were thinking of the demons, suddenly here came the demons. Oh, a huge, huge, huge crowd of demons. And and they walked up and they saw the god sitting there and they said, Hey, what's up? And Indra said, rather than insult them, which was his preferred means of dealing with the demons or avoid them or ignore them, <laughs> which is uh, what us good people like to do. We just can't imagine that we have these demonic, negative, nasty little powers inside ourselves. So we just love to deny them. And uh, he said, uh, hey, listen, we were just thinking here, we just got a secret message from a very reliable source. You wouldn't know who that was, but we're happy to share it with you. Uh, that said that at the bottom of this lake, you, out there in the middle, you see where the Suki's wrapped around Mandara's head? Out there, right straight down from there, is a chalice full of nectar, and even one drop of that nectar, even, even just one sniff, or even a taste, just a little taste like that will what? Make you immortal. Wouldn't you like to be immortal? Oh, the dot said, you bet. The demon said, yeah, you bet. Well, we would too. We'd like to be immortal. You'd like to be immortal. We honestly, I just to be honest with you, I'm I'm sharing now. I'm I'm sure don't don't laugh, but um we're just not strong enough to do it ourselves. We need you. You guys have got lots of energy. And please help us, and we'll share the we'll share the immortality, the nectar, half and half. You get half, I get it. We get it up, we'll divide it up. You take your half, we'll take our half. You gain immortality, I gain immortality, and all problems, all problems are solved. We know you know we have problems, and we know you have problems, and so we're going to solve problems for everybody by working together. So they get out there and they turn and they turn and they turn and they turn. And pretty soon, you know, they get a rhythm going. And uh, demons don't mind messing around with the tail, even though that's where, you know, the, the waste comes out. <laughs> they, they enjoy waste. They live in waste. <laughs> they eat waste. Yeah, these are the people that are, I call them doing garbage can sadhana, the poor Eeyore types. Oh, don't notice me. I, I, I just, just, but just any sort of, you never notice me, but just a little something, I just throw your garbage in me and, and, and I'll be happy. At least it, it's garbage, yes, but at least you recognize me. Those kind of people who just are so needy and who needs, they're so hungry for attention. Even negative attention for them is good enough. Whereas the gods will say, you know, beat it, get out of here. The demons, they'll, th these kind of people, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll be happy with it. Not really happy, but happier than they were, what? When nobody's looking at them, nobody's paying attention to them. So they start turning, turning, turning. And wonderful things start coming up. All oh, beautiful things. All, oh, you know, start just like, you know, when you stir up a lake or something like that, things start that have been on the surface, the bottom, right? When they have a big storm, if you notice in a storm, things come up from the bottom of a lake and they're deposited on the shore. 
And uh, that, what are those things? Those wonderful things. They're all listed in the story. I can't remember what they all are. Uh, but they, they boil down to just the, the Siddhi powers. The powers you get when you do inquiry, when you do yoga. Patanjali, as you'll know, uh, warns against them in the third chapter of the of the Yoga Sutras. He says, stay away from those things. And uh, they, they all, uh, both the demons and the gods wanted to go, but Indra said, no, listen, uh, I read somewhere that, that those are not really good. He must have read the Yoga Sutras at some point. And uh, when they started coming, he said, no, that's not the nectar. It looks like nectar. It gives you, it'll give you a, a little hit, a little buzz, and you'll feel powerful for a little while, but it'll wear off because it's produced by uh, just this churning action. It's just a result of karma, and anything that's created by karma dies by karma. It's just the way it goes. So that's not what we want. Hang in there. I think we're getting close. Churn harder. In other words, think harder. Focus more clearly. Contemplate more deeply. And they do. And boom, boom, boom. They're going, 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 going. And they're getting a rhythm. Huh? That's how it is. When you do self-inquiry, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a habit. It becomes a rhythm. And 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 they're going, 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 going. And the ocean is surging, surging, surging. Surge. And then suddenly this this nasty, foul, disgusting poison just starts, fumes start coming out of the ocean and they spread out all over and the vegetation starts dying. Everything starts dying. And they're like, oh my God, how do we deal with this? What, what, would, that, <laughs> what would that be? That's your samskaras, your vasanas. Right. Those things, huh? They, they're, they're po those poisonous forces in you, those poisonous memories from, from way back in the past that had never been resolved in, in this lifetime. They've just been sitting there in your unconscious, and while you've been coping on the surface, those things start to come up and they start to poison you. And and in and the gods are coughing and the demons are coughing and oh my god. And then Indra says, Jesus, I and you know, keep going, keep going. I think the thing's gotta keep going. And and then he says, just at the moment when he's about to give up and say, okay, let's call it off. This is way too painful. We can't do it. Because it's very painful to look at your stuff. It it contradicts your good opinion of yourself. And uh, and nobody likes that. Because we're all living in this fantasy that we're all very wonderful as people. Even, even the people who think they're miserable think their misery is special and unique and they're very, very sensitive. And that's why they're so miserable or something. Everybody's romanticized all this stuff. Just when he's about to give up, he looks in the sky and here comes Shiva and Parvati riding on Nandi. Nandi is a bull, a great big monstrous bull like we have in Spain, these toros. And, uh, and it has wings. And it's flying along. And Shiva and Parvati, Shiva and Shakti, the uh, consciousness and matter, they're what? They're sitting together, riding on the hill, and out for a uh, sunny drive. They're Mahatmas too, they know. They're Rishis too. They know who they are. So, and then you say, hey, 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 Shiva. Shiva's lost in contemplation, but Parvati notices because she's, you know, that's her job is to take care of matter, take care of the world. She's the Shakti. And she says, hey, Shiva, whoa, whoa, stop. Tell this bull to stop. We, they, 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 some guys want, they want us down there. It looks like Indra and the gods. And there's a bunch of demons there too. I don't know what they're doing, but we should go down and investigate. So Nandi flies down, lands on the shore. 
And uh, Indra says, hey, Jesus, Shiva, thank God. You're an ocean of compassion. This is cut to the chase, man. I, I, you know, you don't need to flatter me. I can see you've got a dire situation. What do you want? And he says, well, look at this. Look what's happening here. Well, we want to live, man. You know, we want to live. We're dying. Look at the plants. Everything's dying. This place is becoming a desert. It's all, it's all falling apart. This poison is killing everything on earth. Please save us. And Shiva, who's an ocean of compassion, walks right out and just takes big strides. He's also infinite. He takes huge strides and he gets out to the center of the ocean and he what? And he takes his hands like this and he scoops up all that poison and what he drinks it. Opens his mouth and he just drinks all of that poison. And Parvati's Parvati's like shocked and and amazed, and she's 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 just mad because she's going to lose her husband, and she needs her husband. She how Shakti did Shiva. Shakti is nothing without Shiva. Of course, Shiva is something without Shakti, but Shiva doesn't know he's something without Shakti. Only Shakti knows this, and Shakti says, "Jesus, I'm going to lose my life. I, I the whole world's going to collapse if this guy dies." So what does she do? She grabs him by the neck, puts her arm, hands around his neck, and she stops the poison in the neck. And that's why Shiva is called Nilakanta. Nilakanta means blue neck. Blue means poison. Now, what is the symbol? Uh, what is the symbol? Well, the symbol is. Uh, those poisonous thoughts and feelings need to be kept in a space that will not what pollute your thinking or your feelings, your head or your heart. The neck is an intermediate space between your head and your heart. So you need to find a place to keep those, set them on the shelf so you don't get poisoned by your vasna. So what? So you can continue uh, to do your journey, your inquiry. Never get defeated by those. What are those? What is that blue neck? Discrimination and dispassion. Right? With the knowledge of what you're doing and the dispassion that is in, engendered by that knowledge, you keep turning. And because, uh, and so what? And so suddenly that poison is gone and uh, the churning becomes easier and easier. They go, no, it's going really fast on both ends. You can see it's just like a dynamo. dynamo. Now that, that your life is just vibrating, it's just like moving forward. It's you're powerful and wonderful, and you feel so, so good because you can feel that what you're about to what discover what you what needs to be discovered. And they're going, 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 and, this, and suddenly, poof pop, up comes this beautiful, radiant chalice. It's so radiant and glowing. It's not blinding light. It's just loving light. It's just so attractive. It's that like Krishna. Krishna means it's what's the most attractive. It's the most attractive thing. Love, your nature, which is immortal, is what the most attractive thing. And the Indra runs the rushes out and grabs the chalice. It had two handles on it. And I forgot what the king of the gods, whatever his name was, just saw the head of the demon. He he grabs out and he grabs the other chalice, other handle, because he doesn't trust. Indra doesn't want to share. And what? And this guy doesn't want to share. Nobody wants to share because they think they're gods and they think they're demons. See the duality here? When you're in duality, you don't want to share. You want it all for yourself. So what do they do? <laughs> they fly off up into the sky, huh? pulling at the chalice. 
And then what happens? When they get over India, four drops of nectar fall out of the chalice in four different spots on India. And that's where a Kumbh Mela takes place every year. In other words, when the whole of India shuts down, closes up shop, and what? And goes on a spiritual pilgrimage. So in other words, dedicates themselves to self-realization. <clears throat> so uh, it's a lovely story. And, you know, if you, yeah, there, there are, um, there are thousands of those stories. There's a, there's another one where Krishna dances on the head of this serpent, that this poisonous serpent that comes out of the of the, of the lake means what? He dances on his vasanas. The self is what dancing on your vasanas. It's not bothered by them. It's enjoying the play of those vasanas, good and bad. Because non dual non dual vision means what? It means the good is good and the bad is good. It's all good. <laughs> and that's the message of Vedanta. So, so you know, don't get discouraged. Yeah, don't get discouraged. Don't, don't, you know, that's why we teach you karma yoga. Don't get discouraged. Why? Because uh, you are that. And you will gain that if you're what? If you have faith in the teaching, and if you do consistently that is your inquiry with what? With vitality, with cheerfulness, with energy. And not allow yourself to get frustrated and depressed. So let's see what do we got. Oh, that's we got we got so a little more time now. Um I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Rather, I, that that story. Since I've interpreted it, it's it's quite clear. Now, uh, and it obviously relates to the topic that we uh, spoke on last week, which was projection and denial. Projection and denial is what is the signature. Um, force or idea or teaching uh, about uh, the causal body, about the milky ocean. Causal by all the other bodies are in the causal body. So churning the milky ocean is what? Bring, the, the bringing up this stuff that um, that's always coming up even if you don't want it to come up. It's welcoming that stuff. So uh, the first, and I've, I've got about 10 or 15 points of logic here. You've heard it, but you probably haven't heard it. In fact, if you've heard it, you need to hear it again because, well, because you do. Uh, control V, I'll just put them in here and then we'll talk about them. Let's see. Oh, maybe that's just how to do it. Paste, I can't see paste. Oops. Oh, here. Oh, everybody. Michael, I would love to hear your comments on all of the stories in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and especially your explanation of the symbols. Oh, yeah. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the, is the Bhagavad Gita of the bhaktas, of the devotees. And that's all the Vedas encode. And the whole story, right up to the Rasa Leela, the Rasa Leela is the, the dance of, of non-duality. Uh, are all nothing but Vedanta in the form of these beautiful stories. So it's amazing. Anyway, um, I'm just like, I'm trying to get this thing to copy here so you can, uh, and I'll put it in the chat box, copy. And then, there we go. I think it should go now, paste, okay. And then enter, hit enter, okay. So, First topic, first idea. The the causal body is what it, it has three it has three powers a, a projecting power, and what uh, a, a concealing power and a revealing power. 
that this teaching is uh, is intended to awaken the revealing power in you, the sattva, and uh, so that your your when your mind is sattvic, it can understand projection and denial. Projection and denial are happening all 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 the time. Now, here, so and I've do I've just outlined for you. Um, the steps and it, just try to follow them and, and uh, I'll post the whole thing. You can either copy it from the chat yourself and 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 finish the list or just save the chat after you're done and then copy it and look at it. Or uh, I'll, I'll also put it on the website <laughs> one fine day, not sooner rather than later. Okay. What what is the what is the first statement? Ignorance manifests as denial. Ignorance is not denial, but it produces denial. What? And denial generates projections. Oh, I got a, a mistake here. I don't think I can edit in the chat thing. Maybe I can. Let me try. Yeah, look at that. Oh no, that's on my thing. It's not in yours. Yeah, I'll, I got it. Okay, so you can ignore that second one. So uh, ignorance manifests as denial. Denial generates projections. Projections cause action, which produce good and bad karma. See where the karma comes from? Huh? It comes from not but it comes from projecting your stuff, your mind stuff. You don't have to worry about the causal body because your access to the causal body is, is the subtle body. And the subtle body is you're aware of. You're not, nobody's aware of the, the causal body. Huh? Everybody's aware of the subtle body. And, the, and that's a valid means of knowledge for the causal body, why? Because everything in the subtle body comes from the causal body. And Ishwar is not aware of it either, because Ishwar is the causal body. It just produces this, all of these phenomena. And what does what what the ignorance do? It hides, conceals, that's Tamaguna, Thomas. It hides what your awareness from yourself, your wholeness, your completeness. Not your awareness, I'm sorry. It hides your the knowledge of your awareness. You have a knowledge that you're aware. And you have the knowledge that you exist. So it doesn't hide existence. You know you exist and you know you're aware. That's self-evident. But you don't know that what? You're immortal, that you're complete. And so ignorance, and that's what we have to teach you. And so, so you don't know that you're whole and complete. So you, and projection is, is, is unconscious. It's happening all the time. You're constantly uh, experiencing thoughts. And what do you think about those thoughts? You think they're real. <laughs> but, uh, but they're not real. Understand? You believe your thoughts. And the thoughts generate emotions. Instead, because you believe the thoughts, you believe the emotions too. Every every emotion is generated by a thought. Every thought is generated by what? By a projection. And those projections are what? Dynamic. What, do, what does that mean? They're what? They're infused with momentum. What is that momentum? The result of all your past actions have what? Produced a tendency an unmanifest tendency to what? To think a certain kind of thought and feel a certain kind of feeling and do a certain kind of action. So, vasana, hmm? kama, karma. You, most of you know that. Those of you who don't, read up on it. It's in all the, all the texts. It's in, in my... Um, uh, essence of enlightenment, particularly, and in how to attain enlightenment and elsewhere. Okay, next. Copy.
paste. Here we go. Enter. Okay. Projections are, what, what are they? <laughs> They're beliefs and opinions, not the truth. Normally, when you have uh, you, when you believe something that you think it's true, when you have an opinion about something, you think that's true. You believe what you believe, and they don't just say those those your beliefs and opinions are not truth. Not uh, so what <laughs> so. <laughs> Non-truth is adharmic. Why? It causes injury to yourself and others. Huh? Of uh, right? Why are you injuring yourself when you believe non-truth? Because you're not growing. And what? And when you pro project your opinions on other people, what do you do? You irritate them. Because unless they have exactly the same opinions you do. But you don't know what another person's opinion is unless you climb into some echo chamber and just listen to a bunch of people saying the same thing back and forth to each other to reinforce their beliefs and opinions, i.e. their ignorance. So avoiding uh, and, and, and avoiding dealing with your opinions and your beliefs your pet, pet opinions and beliefs. Avoiding non-truth, i.e., is conscious denial. That means lying to yourself or others. You're actually consciously lying to yourself and others. Why? Because you don't want to face the fact that what? You're not as wonderful as you think you are, and you may be ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean you aren't smart and you can't pass a test in physics or whatever it is, or write the great American novel or whatever it is. Ignorance means you're just ignoring the most essential thing about yourself, huh? your wholeness and your completeness. That's all it means. And we call those people ignorant people. It's not a judgment because they can't help it. If you could help being ignorant then, and you continue to persist in your ignorance, then yeah, you, you know, you're an idiot. <laughs> but people aren't like that. We're all born ignorant. And, uh, and by investigating and by, uh, you know, a righteous life and inquiry and so forth, you can have that ignorance removed and remove it, or at least learn to figure out how to remove it, which is what we're telling you now, and then remove it yourself. I can't remove your ignorance, but uh, I can show you how to do it, which is what I'm trying to do in this <laughs> in these satsangs. And my whole life has been dedicated to that in the last 50 years. So, so avoiding non-truth is conscious denial, which means lying to yourself or others. Others deserve the truth as you. What I see, you're withholding something that what you deserve. You deserve to hear the truth, and so does everybody else. It's what? It's self-injury, as I pointed out. Why? Because it prevents growing into the light of self-knowledge. You, you see these people, and I know we have a number of them in our sangha who, who've been around for many years, been listening to Vedanta for many years, and yet they still, uh, still don't get it. Why? Because they're actually lying to themselves. They're cheating themselves by what? Indulging in these opinions, these beliefs. They're not, uh, they're not, they're, they're just not listening. They're not qualified, unfortunately. So, so we, we love them, but what can we do? The teaching doesn't work on those people because they're actually what? They're more in love with their opinions and beliefs, which are injuring them. These are the garbage can people. Dump some garbage in me. 
And, and those garbage kind of people are very intelligent. They know how to irritate you. So you'll dump your garbage on them. And they love that. So they get in an argument and a fight with you. Why? So they can eat your garbage. Because they feel like you care about them when you're fighting with them. And the best thing you can do with those people is what? Just not fight with them. Don't feed them. Because <laughs> they're, they're taking advantage of you. I told you about this gentleman uh, last year when the COVID thing came up, you know, who just, there were, two, there were several of them, about five or six, that I knew well and loved, and I still love them, but uh, they wanted to argue. They, they did not like, they had the belief that, the, you know, that the evil cabal was going to, you know, and, the, you know, the whole thing with the, and, uh, all of those, you know, that whole thing, which doesn't seem to be a big issue nowadays, um, was disturbing their minds. Then they want, uh, then that's a great idea to, uh, that's a great uh, hook to hang your projections and dig out those projections and what, and stick them on, uh, on somebody else. Which, which isn't good for them. They think it's good for you, but it's not good for you. And if they think it's good for them to do that, to save your poor sorry ass. Uh, but it's not good for them to save your sorry ass because your sorry ass is okay. And even if it isn't, it's up to you to save your own self. It's not up to other people to save you. There's no saving. You're already saved. <laughs> Understand? So, and lying, this lying to yourself and others is what? Either consciously or unconsciously, it's self-injury because it prevents growth into life, self-knowledge. We said that. Truth is hard. And what is the truth? Okay, it's very simple. Truth is the hard and fast knowledge I am free. Acknowledge, that, I don't know what them is, is... <laughs> Is acknowledging them is more useful. What did I mean there? I got so so wrapped up in what I'm saying now. I forgot the inspiration that that Ishwar said down. Uh, oh, oh yeah. So uh, acknowledge the the truth is one thing, but what acknowledging the truth is something else. You have to uh, you you have to value that. Acknowledge that and value it, and then what? And then proceed on, which is Shravana Manana and Nidhid Yasna. Now, the next topic is just that we're almost done. It just takes a few minutes here, and we can have some Q&A. Do, do you care what people think? Okay, now this is, the, the, we're just getting more and more and more practical as we go. Okay? And and how do well, what do I mean by that? I mean that. Let me just paste this in. And here we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. It appeared nicely. So we're getting better at this technology stuff. Okay. Do you? This is how you tell if you care what people think then what? Then you've got a problem. Then, now, you, you probably have some idea what the, you know, wh why you shouldn't care. And there are reasons why you should, up to a point. But basically, you should, uh, you should trust yourself and the knowledge and the teacher and the teaching. Because they won't steer you wrong. Understand? People Say, always say they have your best interest in mind, and sometimes they do, but you can't count on it. People are unreliable because their opinions change and their relationships with you and others change. And so they'll say one thing at one time and another thing at another time, and they'll hedge their bets and so forth and so on. Whereas the scripture is just straightforward. It doesn't hedge its bets. It's not trying to make you feel good. It's just trying to help you uh, to gain something that's most important to you. People, okay, so if you got this problem, if you care what people think, even a little bit, 
The reason I'm a successful teacher is because I don't honestly care. I don't care. If I cared one little bit, I wouldn't do this. Understand? And if I was insecure and had low self-esteem, when these people start, you know, attacking me and saying things that aren't true, I'd get what? I'd feel hurt. I'd feel angry. I'd address. I'd want to fight. So forth and so on. I don't feel that way. I don't care, honestly, what anybody thinks. Yeah. And so, oh, people only care what you think and feel. Why? Not for your sake. Only insofar as it benefits them. Understand? Nobody does anything that is altruistic. They all do it because of pleasing men. Altruistic stuff, all the altruistic stuff, all the good things they do, they do because it pleases them to do it. They're not doing it ultimately for you, although you may benefit from what they do. So. Projecting your feelings, let's see, where are we at here? Projecting your feelings, whether, whether they correspond to reality or not, is usually injurious to yourself and others. Why? Why? Because of the way you do it or don't do it. Solicited, we've covered this topic many times, Solicited information is dharmic, assuming it is given in a kind way. So what? So if you want to tell somebody something, you need to what? Wait until they ask, and what? And you need to tell them in a kind way, in a, with pleasing words, in a careful way. You don't just blurt out what you feel. Unsolicited information is rarely appreciated and usually leads to conflict. Nobody likes conflict unless it makes them feel good. Tough love is only warranted if it is solicited and offered in a kind way. The mind projects, what does it do? It projects positive, negative, and neutral thoughts. Neutral thoughts are generated. What? Okay, let's let's leave out the neutral thoughts. Why? Why do we want to leave out the neutral thoughts? What's generated them? Not sattva. The presence of the self, right, is reflected in the sattva, and therefore what? It appears as a neutral thought, as things you notice, but you're not you don't focus on. Remember the noticing and focusing teaching? Understand? Neutral thoughts are generated by the presence of the self. Fantasies, positive and negative thoughts, because you have negative fantasies, fears, and positive fantasies, desires, are, are fears and desires which are only valuable when they correspond with scripture. That's the lodestone. That's how you determine whether or not what you think and feel and say and do right, is appropriate, is conducive to your liberation. Check the scripture. The scripture even stands above the teacher. Understand? Wanting freedom this is the last point. Wanting freedom is not a fantasy at all. It's the nature of yourself. If you exist, you're free. That's it. And that's all you need to understand. That doesn't mean that's all you need to understand. And, you know, let's go have a beer. That means understanding that uh, is all you need to what? Uh, become immortal.
it's not a fantasy. And if you if you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, that all sounds very good and so forth and so on, and uh, I don't think it's true, I can't sign on to that, then you're making a well, you're doing yourself a disservice. And usually those thoughts only come. No, they don't all, not only come, but usually they def they definitely do come when when they're the teacher's enlightenment is based upon his or her own personal experience. And two, he or she does not have a valid impersonal means of knowledge, aka Vedanta. So okay, so that's it for uh for today. Uh, I'm happy to uh, take some questions and and uh, answers. Uh, oh, I'll do the answers, I guess. Uh, although if anybody has uh, something to to say, um, yeah, we just had these two so far. But if there are any more, uh, if there's any other comments, go ahead and make your comments, and I'll see if I can't help you with them. I know it's a it's a lot it's a lot to take in and and it's it's so clear that really I, you know it's really hard to even ask a question about it. <laughs> um, James, oh here's Kevin. Good, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James, you said in the new rules that we should read Tatwa Bode thirty minutes every day. I purchased the full set when came to all your published books. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. That's that's right. So listen, uh, I, I've got your email. I'll send it to you. And this is true for anybody else who hasn't got it, uh, who hasn't read Tatu Boat. I, I, there, there, I, I have uh, on the website a, a, a Tatu Boat, but don't read that one. It's okay, but, but, uh, when we started this, making this a more formal, uh, formal thing, uh, when we started, the shine world started to really get, get this all organized in the form of a teaching um, uh, itself, and 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 logically lay it out. I rewrote the Tatu Bode for inquirers, for beginners. I just, I, I didn't change any of the ideas. I just made it more accessible. So uh, send me your email. I've got it. Uh, you've been donating uh, regularly and generously. Thank you very much. And um, and I will send you a copy. And the idea there is is just don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. If it's only fifteen minutes, that's fine. You you've got to what you've got to um, uh, start somewhere. I was reading this, reading this thing about let's see, oh how you get rid of uh, a, cl a clutter, you know, hoarders, because hoarders just can't get rid of anything. I realized I was a hoarder because I hoard these teachings <laughs> like anything. So over the last two or three years, I've been throwing out tons of stuff that you know I just hoard. I love Vedic stuff, and I got tons of stuff. I'll never use it. It's just sitting there, and so I'm <laughs> constantly, still today, throwing it out regularly. I've just constantly hoarding, but hoarders, you know, um, they got to start somewhere. And they got to start with a little thing, just throw out a, 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 a broken pencil that you, you know, you think you're going to sharpen one day, start, start really small. And, and, and then gradually just keep at it. So, so just read a little bit. And, and, uh, and then think about it, and that'll set the tone for the day. Do your little chant, do your meditation, huh? take your bath, your shower, and if it's a bath in the morning, whatever it is, get fresh, read the scripture for you know, 15, 20 minutes. If you got 30 minutes, fine. If you get stuck at a certain point, huh? uh, then don't read on. Don't say, oh, I, you know, if, it's, if, a, if an idea is kind of half assed and fuzzy, then don't proceed. Say okay, let me think about that for the day, and so uh, and so you get that in your mind, and, and 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 as you go out the day, churn it over and over and over, and maybe in the evening sit down again and think about it, and until it becomes clear. When it becomes clear, then move move on. Then the next morning, move on again. 
And if you really, really, really super get stuck, then, you know, write one of us <laughs> an email and we'll unhook you, uh, you know. But uh, so <clears throat> uh, that's the method. And then gradually what? Because you got to get the terminology right. A lot of people think they understand these words because they've heard them in the spiritual world, but they've heard them in different contexts from different people who had different views, particularly dualists, masquerading as non-dualists. And, and your understanding won't be correct, but you'll think you know it. So in this one, in this teaching, we just want everybody on the same page. That way I can teach a lot of people at once. And I've gotten so popular lately that I, I just can't teach everybody from the very beginning. At the beginning, I used to just one by one, I teach them every single thing from, from A, B, C, D, right on up to rocket science. It took a long time sometimes, but now that's not possible. So you can do this on your own and we'll try to help you with it. So, and see, and here's Anne. I haven't managed to write it all down, James. Can you, can it, can it be posted again? Okay, yeah, I will. That's even better. I'll, I'll post it. Uh, I'll post it uh, on the website, and I'll, I'll make a note of that right away. And I'll post it uh, on the web again. Uh, those uh, such songs kind of circle cycle slowly. Eventually, it'll come off. But there, you can always just type in Tapu Bode. And uh, and in the search function, it will pull up the document, the book, or a link to the book. You hit the link, and it'll take you to the book, and then you can download it. So, well, you know, I, stay away from other people's total boats. <laughs> I have the book. It may be helpful, but I'm not other people, and other people aren't me. <laughs> this thing works for me. I know how it works, and it works for you if you trust me. It'll works for it works for me for you too. So, so yes, okay, good good suggestion, Anne. Thank okay, you, thank you, Matthew. Matthew, to me, I don't think I understand about fancy, fantasies corresponding to scriptures. Scripture, could you could you see? Yeah, I mean, there you know, like for example. You may, you know, that your ego, your, your domestic part may, may say, well, that's all well and good, you know, but enlightenment is, is, it's way too complicated. Look at this program you laid out, James. For God's sakes, you've got beginners and intermediate and advanced, and you say it's 30 years, 5, 10, 15 rule. That, uh, that's that's fantastic. That I I don't believe that. That's a fantasy. You're making that up because you like to yak 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 me to and and uh, and uh, you know I can't do that. But the scripture says that. <laughs> the scripture says it says says in, in Yoga Sutra says it, what desire for enlightenment is what piddling, middling, and burning. <laughs> and it says you if you have a very very small piddling desire that you'd have a piddling desire you wouldn't even be interested in vedanta or any spiritual ask but you don't do a thing about it then what it's useless and the scripture recommends a burning desire it says middling's okay but again right again you're in the middle you're not sure if you're going forward or backward it's like the the gods and the demons fighting. There, there's always this fight in your mind, this conflict in your mind going back and forth. Whereas if your desire is pure and intense, then that's not a fantasy. <laughs> You're not just... Because that material part of you is going to try to tell you, convince you that right, it's over your head. It's not over your head. This is not over your head. Ramana Maharshi was just a regular guy. Buddha was just a regular guy. All of these, all of these teachers, these the great sages of yore, they were all just regular people, suffering in one way or the other. Who what? 
who got the bug and went for it. And they didn't stop being regular people because they attained the highest state, the fourth state in their in transcendental reality. You know, all, all this, you know. And the scripture always warns against what these fantasies and exaggerations and so forth and so on. So that's an idea. Does that, does that help? Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you, James. Did you hear me? Anyway, okay. Renee and Sebastian do. Hi, Ramji. Regarding opinions and beliefs, does that mean that having a personal opinion on whatever topic, let's say something from the news like the V, <laughs> good for you, uh, is a dharmic in every possible case? No. Let's see here. Let me, let me, let's see this again. Let's see here. Let's see. Where do we go here? Oh, it jumped here. This thing jumped. Okay, here we are. Hi, Ramji. Regarding opinions and beliefs, does this mean that having a personal opinion on whatever topic, let's, well, it depends on whether you believe that opinion or not. If you know it's opinion, do you think it's the truth? Well, I mean, what good does a belief or opinion do? Let's put it that way, Renee. Uh, but I don't think. Um... Well, what good does a belief do? A belief isn't a fact. Did I? What did I write about mm -hmm. facts? I, oh, I got an. I got a. Yeah, I got another thought song about facts coming up. I'll publish that. Beliefs are not facts. I just wrote one today. And I'll put that up too. Beliefs are not facts. So uh, facts, facts are, are, are all you can count on. You can't count on a belief because that belief may change. And, and beliefs are not going to lead you anywhere. They're always going to lead you to what? I, into ignorance because you're, you're believing because you're ignorant. Only facts remove ignorance. Facts, facts mean knowledge, not just information. Now, beliefs about a virus, a V, or a V, right, is not knowledge, it's information. Information is different from knowledge. Knowledge you can count on, but information changes every second. You know, now the information about the Vs and the V, <laughs> about both the V and the V, right, is constantly changing. Now we're getting new every every week or month we get new new basic information based upon uh, observation and experience about the uh, that you could call momentarily factual <laughs> information is momentarily factual the operative word is momentarily but you don't want to get hardened in that belief and say, well, you know, well, it's like this and that's the truth. And, you know, that's talking about you and your personality and, and your, your, your tamaguna, your, your stubbornness and your stuckness. Understand? You're holding on to it. Okay, I got this opinion. I'm going to wait and see if there's new information coming out. Before, uh, to reevaluate re my opinion. But people don't reevaluate their opinions generally. We, we got a, a, a neighbor nearby who, who believes that, that uh, the world's coming to an end soon. And, 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 and she's preparing for the end. It's, it's the end times. And she is not pre prepared to we thought we liked her and she was a nice, a really nice lady. And we thought, well, it'd be very nice to have a friend around here because we live way out in the in the you know the country. There aren't many people around. And and so we tried to cultivate a relationship with her and it didn't work because uh, because she believed she she discovered that we didn't believe that the world was going to end tomorrow. <laughs> She doesn't believe the world's going to end. She believes the system's going to collapse. The what? Oh, the oh, the world's not going to end. Oh, yeah. Sundry said that the system's going to collapse. 
The banks are going to collapse. Get your money out. Put it in a coffee can and hide it in your garden. No one will know. <laughs> the system's always going to collapse. <laughs> but life goes on. We eat, we sleep, we walk, we talk, the sun shines, everything happens normally, everything's been happening the same way forever, you know, and, and systems collapse and come and they go and so forth and so on. Nothing collapses, life goes on, you know, and nothing's life and death. These are all beliefs and opinions that are what? Negatively affecting your enjoyment of life. So, so, understand? So, this this the belief and opinion is the reason we're talking about this so you can identify belief and opinion and and know the difference between that and a fact. <laughs> so, huh? okay, he says uh, to say it's like something from the news. Yeah, you know I don't recommend doing. I I recommended media fast for some people because they were addicted to the news, but. You, you know, you're always connected to media somehow. You just have to, the attitude you have toward the media should be, let's see. Let's wait and see. You know the story about the the uh, the Chinese guy and, the, and his, his son got conscripted and they said, that's bad news. Uh, and, and then he said, well, let's see, because he's going to have to go fight in the war. And then when they took him for a physical, it turned out that he, he was a cripple. <laughs> or, or he wrote and said, oh, my son's got a crippled leg, so he can't go to the war. So, well, that was good, right? So he, he didn't have to go to the war. There's always an upside here. And, and, but that doesn't matter, because there's always a downside. What, what matters is the is a wait-and-see attitude. Let's see how it plays out. In other, and in the meantime, what should we do with our mind? Not obsess about this stuff, but what? But get on with our sadhana. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a dharmic, not in, yeah, it, it's a dharmic in the sense that you're wasting your time. Wasting time is a dharmic because life is precious. Right? <laughs> Do you, do you want to go, do you, you want to prevent something good from happening because you're worried about something bad happening? Well, okay, bad things do happen. Let's wait and see if they happen. In the meantime, let's generate the kind of karma that what? That, that creates good things for ourselves. And you do that by what? By following your program, doing the karma yoga, and yana yoga, and so forth and so on. Nicole, Ramji, I've looked for a long time for the article on Shining World about symbol of the self. But can't find it. Okay, I'll. I'll, I'll make a note of it. I'll get it to her. Soon, Sundry just made a note of it. She'll get it to you. I don't know. The other people have had trouble finding it. Some haven't. I. Um, we'll upgrade it. We'll, we'll, uh, we're upgrading slowly, slowly. Actually, we're working like demons behind the scenes here. To uh, we're going to have some surprises, shining world surprises coming up before long. Uh, but uh, which means uh, a more uh, accessible uh, information base or knowledge base. Let's call it a knowledge base. And, uh, the link via your video on the screen on the subject is broken. Oh, it is. Can you please establish it? Uh, yes. Now, where? Send, send me that link, Nicole, will you please? And I'll I'll uh, I'll check it out and get it fixed up. Thank, uh, good. Matthew, uh, Matthew to everyone. Thanks, that helps. Okay, good. Renee uh, and Sebastian to everyone. Yeah, this yeah, this is uh, this is Minnesota, Matt, right? Yeah. Okay. This can, is, uh, can this is you Minnesota, hear me? Matt. Maybe you got your sound off. Oh, I got uh, my... Who is that? Uh, who's N.A.? No, I can't hear you. And, and, and I think my sound's on, isn't it, sweetheart? Yeah, your sound is on. Yeah, my, my sound's on. Otherwise, nobody could hear uh, Otherwise, nobody would hear me, so it must be on your end. I'm not hearing you. Maybe you're, uh, you're mute. Maybe you're muted. <sighs> 
then, oh, this is a, oh, is any again. So long as I know it is an opinion and I'm open to new, in, yeah, there you go. Okay, that's good. So long it is as it is an opinion and I'm open to new information, that's okay. Yes. Okay, good. That's all I've tried to say. But if I believe my opinion to be true, I'm misguided. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you may, it may be true. Oh, let's put it this way. An opinion may end up, when you investigate it, turn out to be true. But you need to investigate it. <laughs> That's what we're saying. You know, like, for example, give you another example. It's just This is a basic Vedanta example. You think, you sometimes feel that you're small and inadequate and incomplete and you're suffering. Everybody has that feeling. Is that true? Or is that just a belief? Understand? Well, most people, when they have that feeling, they take it to be the truth. And then they build their identity on that. They do not like, ask themselves, well, is this true? And, and look, look for reasons why it's not true. Because there's plenty of reasons why that's not true, particularly if you're if you're attracted to Vedanta. Because Vedanta systematically what destroys this notion that there's something wrong with you. Oh, there's something wrong with me. I have low self-esteem. Now you say I have low self-esteem, but is that the truth? No, it's a belief. It's an opinion. In other words, you're believing your belief. <laughs> you're believing your opinion. That's that's the wrong approach. The right approach is to say, okay, let's see. I feel it. That's fair enough. I feel it. It's okay. I don't like that feeling. But is it really true? Byron Katie and her thing said that. Then she said the next thing you do is say, is it really true? Because <laughs> obviously you wouldn't have it if you didn't think it was true. If you, if, you, if you knew it was not true, you wouldn't have it. But obviously you think it's true, so then you say, well, what is it really true? And then if you want to go deeper into it, you say, well, what, what benefit am I getting out of this, of thinking like this about myself? Usually, you, usually you, you know, you get sympathy. That's usually the benefit. You you you're not you don't love yourself enough, so you need people to to tell you you're okay. So when you start feeling like that, feeling bad, then people say, "Oh no no, it's fine. Never mind. You're sweet. You're great. You're loving. You're the, I, I like you. You're good." And so forth. And they pat you on the back and and buy you a cup of coffee or whatever it is, and 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 then you oh yeah, I guess that's right. You know, so so you look for validation of a belief that's not true. You understand? So, so inquiry is just a state of mind. It's just like, you know, not saying it's this or that. It's just saying, well, let's see what's happening here. Let's investigate it. That's inquiry. It's a natural state of mind. Uh, okay, discrimination is the key. Got it. Good for you, Renee. Uh, or maybe it's Sebastian. I got Renee and Sebastian. So maybe you both believe the same thing or maybe one. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, Ramji. Isn't it easier just to not have opinions? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I don't have any beliefs or opinions. I, I offer beliefs and opinions just for the fun of it, to right, stimulate conversations and lead people. If I can get them into involved in something and liking me, I can then turn the conversation into what? Into what I consider a meaningful conversation, which is a snut song. But yeah, it's much better, particularly when you're in, in the sadhana phase and you're actually working on yourself. Just you know, to hell with it. That's why. I, that's why I, you know recommend media fasts to people. But most of those people, they're, they're they're troubled by their beliefs and opinions, but they can't do a media fast. Although I have met Kate, lately, I've met two or three people who actually did it. I was like, oh, you did? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, it's better. And if I do, just hold them lightly. That's right. 
seems to work for me. But does it make me a boring person in some people's eyes? Yeah, probably does. But who cares about what some people think? <laughs> There's, you know, some people, you know, some people's only in your mind. There's no some people anyway. And if there are some people, well, forget it. Who cares what they think? People think they, what they think according to their nature. They don't think what they think because you're a certain way. They think what they think because they're a certain way. Oh, huh? It's important that you don't bore yourself. What's that? It's important that you don't bore yourself. It, yeah, it's important. <laughs> Sooner said it's important that you don't bore yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if other people think you're boring, well, fair enough. But are you bored with you? And and you know, I'm bored with me. That's why I teach me not to. I'm not interested in me at all. It's just I'm so bored. I've been me for like 82 years, and I'm like fed up. I just like to talk about Vedanta and other people. Right? Well, knowledge is fun. Knowledge can be interesting and fun. You yeah, have to take it serious worldly knowledge. Yeah, but knowledge is is fascinating, oh. huh? It's just unfolding all the time. It's so cool. The whole world is nothing but knowledge. This whole creation is made of knowledge. To see how Ishwara put this creation together on a daily basis, my God, it's it's, it's extraordinary to see how the the weather works and the fire and the elements and and the plants and the and we got a cat. Oh my God, our cat is so funny to watch. We're just getting knowledge all the time. It's just lovely, the cat, cat knowledge. And, you know, no, it's not, you know, mind-blowing knowledge. It's just beautiful. It's just interesting to see how everything's constructed and worked. And, and, and all that is is just what it increases your appreciation of Ishwara, your bhakti for Ishwara. And you need that bhakti for Ishwara to what? To gain freedom. So, so yeah. Seek knowledge, but don't say, knowledge are facts. I just wrote a fact uh, uh, satsang this morning. I haven't got it on the website. I, I usually let them sit for a day or two uh, to check them and see if I have anything new to add or if I made some mistakes and and uh, spell check them and so, and so on. And then I put them up. So that one on facts will come up. I'll try to put that up tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Jamie Curtis, I left the suitcases behind. What a relief. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Ro <laughs> Robin has said, you know, when you're going on a bus, you, you know, you don't carry your suitcases in your hand. Well, yeah, and, that's what you put them on the rack or under the bus and the bus carries them. And well, you know, just get on the bus without any suitcases because uh, you, you're good to go. And the driver's yeah. going to take you there. And what's the driver? Ishwara in the form of this teaching. So good for you, this Jamie. Satsang, this satsang um, was all full of baggage. <laughs> it uh, let the baggage okay. go. Fernando, Ramji, uh, when family members trigger negative emotions, is this only a product of holding on to false beliefs? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's more difficult with family members because you know the 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 condition is deeper. You know, you've been around them a long time and you have to live with them. And they just and they follow their nature all the time. So whatever they opinions they have and beliefs they have, you'll get them. And and the, the family units embedded in the culture. Some cultures are just, you know. Like here, I I don't notice in Spain. I don't notice a lot of, of of judgmentalism. I mean, of course, everybody judges, but as a culture, you don't really notice it. People just seem to do their thing and, and are interested in enjoying, you know, manana and festivals and all that sort of thing. But but go up to Germany or America, my God, those people are opinionated, and they really believe what they think, and they indoctrinate you. And and you're heavily indoctrinated, you know, and and to into thinking you you know what you think and feel and how you see things is is right. So anyway, yeah, so that's right. So just you know, just again with those, just just nod your head and say, yeah, I think you're right, and, and you know, and think what a jerk, you know, 
they're trying to like indoctrinate me some more, but let them do it. I mean, they're not going to change. So just think, oh, well, okay, fine. Say what you want to say and nod your head, smile, and, and just move on. John Franco, hi, Ram Jean Sundry. This link to the video Satsang of the 18th December doesn't work. Can you do the something about it? Okay. I couldn't attend that satsang, so all right, yeah. I'll check it out. Huh? Will you? It's probably not on anymore. It it may have uh, it may have uh, cause cause those uh, those uh, those yeah. links that we po post, uh, we actually after you know we did have to delete them and and as we post more satsang, they keep going to the bottom of the list. Probably the, not available because we don't have that account anymore. We switched accounts. Oh, and she said it may be available because we don't have that account. We'll look into it and, and get that one to you. Uh, I've written it down. She's written it down. What was the topic? It's just the 18th of December. I'll look it up. Just oh, 18th of December. Okay, good. Thank you for helping. Only if it's not too complicated. No. Yeah. <laughs> Life is complicated. You should you should have seen me. I was pretty good. Sundry Sundry did because uh, normally I'm grousy and grumbling because you know getting this whole thing set up to teach in this way, it's been a learning curve. And on top of it all, I got a new monitor and, and computer, and then I've got now I got two of those ring lights, and we got all this other little stuff around getting this whole thing set up. And then, so it looks nice, and so it actually works. Jesus, I mean, I, I was not a thought of uh, this this afternoon when I was doing it. I thought there must be, oh, three or four thousand thoughts that I have to act out every week to make this happen. And I, and I don't. It, it's not just it's not just the technical stuff, but but the the topic. Like when I get a topic or somebody suggests a topic or I, I, a Ishwar gives me a topic, then then I think about it all week and I make notes and I keep revising those notes as, 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 new, no, as new information comes in from, from within, from the Ishwar. And then I try to write it up and put it in an organ, make it like a scripture here. Uh, if, I, if I'd have written all that I, that stuff up, most of you probably would have understood it because now you can read between the lines and you're thinking along these lines anyway. But a lot of you new people have a hard time with it. That's why I explain it in detail at each one of these uh, statements. So, um, <laughs> and life is complicated, but so what? I'm not complicated. I'm very simple. Right? I'm just one simple, ever present awareness entity. I don't have to believe anything or think anything particular. Any belief or opinion that passes through my mind is fine with me. I, you know, I just do one thing at a time as best as I can. I'm an ant. The, the ant sadhana is a good uh, sadhana. I haven't thought about that one for a while, but, you know, one step at a time. Ants build great colonies. And, and they all work together. It's amazing how they work there. The other day when, when the weather gets really warm, actually it's warm here still, uh, but uh, the, the other day when it was warm, you know what happened? It was so, so amazing, it was so beautiful. At a certain moment, I noticed the ants keep piling up more and more dirt from, from underneath, they live under the ground. And then and they're just regular ants. And then one day their wings come out, the wings sprout, and you know what they do? They all come all at once in a great swarm, just all out, and they fly into the air, and their wings are glistening in the sun, and it's the most mystical, magical, beautiful thing to just, and they're all flying out. It is so amazing. And, you know, but all of that was like step by step by step by thought, you know, from chewing the dirt and sitting there and waiting for the wings, and all, you know, so... Life is complicated, yeah, but I'm not complicated, and life is beautiful because it's complicated. And in fact, it's the variety and the and the complexity and the and the novelty 
and the awe and the wonder that's built into life that makes life so attractive and that distracts us from that simple entity that we really are, that simple, ever free, unborn entity that we really are. Okay, that looks like uh, the end of it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Unless there's anything else, we'll um, say that's it. season's greetings again. Uh, and don't forget the advice from last year. It doesn't make any difference. As much a difference what you do between Christmas and New Year's. What really counts is what you do between Christmas and between New Year's and Christmas. <laughs> so actualize this knowledge and you'll be fine. And even if you're not, you're fine. So, okay, love you guys. And we'll see you next week by the grace of God.